always do it on my own so i gotta get through it and the only thing i know is to love what i'm doing never give up never slow till i find i mean no one has ever had a better body than anthony joshua you've only had a different body head up that's a fact never looking back i'ma keep myself on track keep my head up staying strong always moving on feel i don't belong tell my thoughts to move along push myself to be the best die with no regrets live with every breath see my message stop it's the fight that i want to see as a but, but then fans. there'll be oh i need joshua too because I, the result he wasn't happy with or I wasn't happy with it. So I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all the start, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. What are you talking to me, guys? What are you talking to me? Boxers such as Muhammad Ali and Evander Holyfield enjoy a special place in boxing history today, not just due to their boxing prowess alone, but their ability to regain their belts. Yeah, Ali, this is the only thing about Ali. When you were watching Ali get beating up as an old man, even that was a young kid, he's not going to quit. You got to kill him. He won't quit. Not once, but twice. Their failures did not prevent them from achieving their goals. Quite the contrary, they took them as a learning experience. And therefore, they are one of the few boxers that have gone on to hold the heavyweight boxing title thrice. Today, Anthony Joshua has his eyes on a mission not only to rank among the boxing greats, but also to thrive for a place in history as he sets a goal for redemption after losing to Usyk twice. And still the unified heavyweight champion of the world, Usyk! We will look into Joshua's early beginnings and career and discuss how this boxing royal will reclaim what once belonged to him. Joshua's background can be traced to the Yoruba tribe, specifically Sagamu, Ogun State in Nigeria. Although he represents the British flag, he is never shy to associate himself with his native country, Nigeria. I am proudly Nigerian and I'm proudly British and I join a long line, perhaps too long to count, of UK citizens of Commonwealth origin who've made enormous contributions to this great multicultural society of ours. Where he is massively supported. Anthony Joshua hails from the aristocratic family of the Yoruba with a rich cultural heritage. His mother is Nigerian, while his father has Nigerian and Irish ancestry. Anthony started his primary education at the Mayflower Boarding School in Nigeria. After his parents divorced when he was 12, he returned to the UK to pursue his schooling. During this period, Joshua demonstrated his freak athlete powers by breaking his school's 100-meter race record by running the distance in 11.6 seconds. But look at Anthony Joshua coming through. His long legs bringing victory. Anthony Joshua, Robbie Grabatz, then Mo Farah. Oh, wow. Poor old Andy Triggs Hodgson. His athletic body and height have always been significant strengths in his career, from his school days to becoming a world boxing champion. By his cousin's suggestion, Joshua began boxing in 2007 when he was 18, which is a relatively late start in a sport like boxing, especially since this sport is widely considered the most demanding sport in the world. Joshua quickly emerged as a serious contender by winning the 2009 and 2010 Herringy Box Cup, as well as winning the Senior ABA Championships in 2010. After defeating Amin Issa in 2010, Joshua became the British Amateur Champion at the GB Championships. Very, very happy, very happy. So, so apart from being happy, what does this mean for your career, would you say? Gold, Commonwealth. During the following year, he defeated the Irishman Cathal McMonagall and the German boxer Eric Brecklin before he was stopped by the dangerous southpaw Mihai Nister. <laughs> By the end of 2011, Joshua had an amateur record of 40-3 and, and was named Amateur Boxer of the Year by the Boxing Writers Club of Great Britain. Anthony's first serious challenge was against the reigning world and Olympic champion Roberto Camarel. Well, 
thought victory could be around the corner, but Joshua gave it all in the final stages. And the gold was won by Anthony Joshua of Great Britain. During the 2011 World Championships in Baku, Azerbaijan, the Italian fighter was no match for the new rising star. Joshua continued winning by stopping the German boxer Eric Pfeiffer in the semi-final. In the finals, do we have the next Audley Harrison on our hands here? The last heavyweight to win Olympic gold in Sydney in 2000. This man's already on his way to London 2012. Although he lost by a single point in the final against Magomed Rasul Majidov. Mohammed Rasul Majidov, my name. Anthony Joshua of England has to settle for the silver. One point and one point only. Joshua secured his place at the 2012 Olympic Games in the super heavyweight division. James De Geer. Inghilterra, silver medal. And we have another one. Joshua Anthony, Anthony Joshua. England. Claims some massive scalps on the way, just unable to pull it out. The young prospect participated in the 2012 London Olympics. Yeah, I'm a Londoner, I represent in London and uh, I've boxed in London so many times before Tufnell Park and all over the place at home shows, but there's going to be nothing that's going to match this. And considering the competition he met there, we can clearly say that he was thrown to the Lions. After winning a very close fight against the Cuban Arislandi Savan, the winner, by score of 17 points to 16, in the blue ball. Joshua fought the 2008 Beijing Olympic silver medalist, Zhang Jile, whom he also beat on the scorecards. In the semi-final, Joshua clashed with Ivan Dichko. The winner by score of 13 points to 11 in a blue corner. Despite the height disadvantage, he managed to beat the Kazakh boxer on points to meet his former opponent, Roberto Camarel, in the final. This time, in a very close fight, the Nigerian managed to edge the Italian champion on the scorecards, becoming the new Olympic champion. Let's not forget that he started his boxing career only five years ago as a relative newcomer, and now he was heading to the elite level of the sport. This was an early indication that Joshua is a championship fighter that will dominate the boxing stage in the future. On July 11, 2013, it was confirmed that Joshua had turned professional. By the time he turned pro, he had become an elite boxer, and now the Olympic gold medalist was ready to prove himself to the big leagues. His first eight bouts during 2013 and 2014 were not even competitive. None of those opponents could cause Anthony any trouble, and nobody could even reach the fourth round. Joshua won the vacant WBC international heavyweight title in his ninth bout against Dennis Bokhtov. Heavyweight division. Oh, oh look at that. He bounced a right hand as well. He loved it. Bokhtov didn't. He's taken it though, but Joshua smiling again. Sharp, nasty little short inside left hand there as well. Backed off with another left hand. TKOing him in the second round. Oh, I thought he was stopping it. He should be. And he will. And he has. WBC International Heavyweight Champion from Watford, England, AJ Anthony Joshua! and continued dominating the boxing stage by finishing Michael Sprott, Jason Gavern, and Rafael Zumbano Love. On May 30, 2015, he retained the WBC International Heavyweight title by beating the former title challenger, Kevin Johnson. During the same year, he was scheduled to fight Gary Cornish for the vacant Commonwealth heavyweight title on the line. Although the Scottish boxer was undefeated before the bout, Joshua, straight right hand. Ah. Joshua looking very sharp. Here he nails it with a right hand inside the first. Unsteady. Joshua looking to measure him up. Could this be gone in the first? He's caught him with another right hand. And now the technique that Joshua is showing at the moment is terrific. You wouldn't believe only a dozen. The referee was forced to stop the fight in the first round after Joshua knocked Cornish down twice. From Watford, England, AJ.
DJ Anthony Joshua. At this time, Anthony Joshua was 14 to 0, finishing all his opponents before the end of the third round, proving to the world that he was a force to be reckoned with. The first fierce challenge in Joshua's professional career was the future champion Dillian White, who was set to put his undefeated record on the line against the rising Nigerian star. Trying to size him up. Gets another right hand through. White looking to try and hold. Lands a right hand of his own. Terrific response again from White. And as long as White returns fire once... Even though Joshua was shaken in the second round, he survived the test and went on to KO White with a devastating uppercut in the seventh round. There's a grin from White, but the legs are betraying him, and down he goes. He's hurt. The way he went down. Joshua Anthony! Joshua! Years later, the Russian boxer Alexander Povetkin would take Joshua's blueprint. Saying Joshua would take up Povetkin oh, early. He might do here. Lovely right hand. Best of the fight from Joshua. Oh, the left hand! and cause White his second loss in the same manner, by a nasty uppercut. In February 2016, Joshua was scheduled to meet Charles Martin for the IBF heavyweight title. Joshua kept the pressure in the first round and controlled the distance before delivering a heavy straight right hand that sent Charles to the canvas. Although Martin got to his feet and was ready to continue fighting, he was knocked down for a second time, and the referee waved the fight off when Martin failed to beat the count by taking too long to get up. This victory earned Joshua his first world title. During the same year, 2016, the Nigerian fought Dominic Breziel, finishing him in the seventh round after dominating him throughout the fight, and destroyed Eric Molina within three rounds, successfully defending the IBF heavyweight title twice. Now was the time to meet one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all time, Vladimir Klitschko. Sure enough, on November 2, 2016, the WBA agreed to sanction a unification bout between Joshua and Klitschko for the previously held vacant WBA super title. To become a legend, you need to beat a legend, and what better name than the former heavyweight king, Vladimir Klitschko, who went unbeaten for 10 years at the top level? In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Klitschko was 41 years old at this time, and he was slowly knocking on the retirement door. Nevertheless, Joshua knew that beating the Ukrainian would boost his popularity to another level, considering the star power behind Klitschko's name. It was classic young versus an old lion. Not just the greatest night ever in British boxing, that was one of the greatest nights in boxing full stop. And this bout was a fighting spectacle. Even though both fighters approached this bout cautiously for the first four rounds, the Nigerian went in an offensive in the fifth round and sent Klitschko to the canvas after throwing a flurry of punches. It's a fight that would define him for as long as he lives. The old lion was not done, and he quickly returned to his feet, taking control of the remaining round. And then, in the sixth round, Klitschko landed a powerful right straight that forced Joshua to the canvas. That punch could have knocked out an elephant. Klitschko was known for his exceptional power, and for a moment, it looked like this would be the end of the rising Nigerian star. As a surprise to many, Joshua stood up and continued fighting as if nothing had happened. Vladimir's older brother, Vitaly Klitschko, advised the Ukrainian to take his time and not rush for the finish. He believed an athlete with muscles like Joshua could never fully recover after such a knockdown. It turned out that it was the wrong tactic considering that Anthony quickly recovered and took up the pace again. The benefit of replay. Oh, oh, Pisco hurt. Pisco is hurt. Pisco is hurt. Pisco is hurt bad. In the next few rounds, both fighters were cautious again, respecting each other's power. It was like that until the 11th round when the younger fighter attacked Klitschko again, sending the former champion to the canvas. Although Vladimir rose back to his feet, Joshua kept the pressure throwing a barrage of unanswered punches while Klitschko was helpless against the ropes. The referee had seen enough and waved the fight off in favor of Joshua.
a superstar was made. Within the same year, Joshua fought Carlos Takam, defending the WBA, Super, IBF, and IBO heavyweight titles. In the 10th round, Joshua landed a clean right uppercut, followed by a storm of punches. The referee Phil Edwards stepped in to stop the fight. After a fight with some controversies, Joshua shared his thoughts in the post-fight interview. It was a good fight until the ref stopped it. I have the utmost respect for Takam. I have no interest for what's going on with the officials. My job is the opponent. I don't have control over the ref's decision, Joshua said. As I said, I have no interest of what's going on with the officials. That's not my job. My job is to worry about my opponent. I was watching him. I was trying to break him down round by round. And unfortunately, the ref stopped it before I... I think people want to see Takam unconscious on the floor. In his next bout, the Nigerian boxer heard the final bell for the first time, winning the bout against Joseph Parker via unanimous decision. The judges scored the fight 118 to 110 twice and 119 to 109 in favor of Joshua. And with that, his 20 fight knockout streak ended. My strategy in there was kind of stick behind the jab. It's one of the most important weapons. The old saying is the right hand could take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world. And that secured another championship belt. So I stuck behind the jab and I made sure anything that was coming back, I was switched on, I was focused, and 12 rounds, baby. I thought it was hard, right? Joshua explained his implemented game plan after the fight. Later that year, Joshua fought Alexander Povetkin. Although the Russian was not at his prime, he was still very dangerous due to his power and ability to shoot someone's lights off with one punch. In front of nearly 80,000 attendees, Joshua knocked out Povetkin in round seven to retain his world titles. At first, it looked like Joshua had underestimated the old Russian, and Povetkin had Joshua hurt early on with his big shots. However, Povetkin began to tire from round five, and Joshua dropped Povetkin with a left hand in round seven. Although Povetkin got back up, Joshua was straight back in with a flurry of hard shots, prompting the referee to stop the fight. This was a reminder that Joshua is a finisher that doesn't want to leave it to the judge's hands. This is what he had to say regarding that. I've got my knockout streak back, and I found my right hand again. Alexander Povetkin is a very tough challenge. He provided that he was good with left hook. I realized he was strong to the head but weak to the body, so I was switching it up. Every jab takes a breath out of you, and I slowed him down. Just when Anthony Joshua looked unstoppable and invisible, his next bout turned out to be one of the biggest upsets in the history of boxing, rivaling Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas. He was scheduled to fight Andy Ruiz Jr., a fighter who looks more like a cook than a boxer. Number two. Interesting, I thought that was an actual conversation. It's in round number two with a nice combination up top and a good exchange hey, from hey, Joshua. Hey, Even though Joshua dropped Ruiz in the first round for the first time in his career, Ruiz beat the count and scored his own knockdown just moments later. And Ruiz, and Ruiz counters! Shot. Ruiz counters and Joshua is down! Joshua survived the next few rounds until the seventh when Ruiz took over again, knocking Anthony down twice before the referee stopped the fight. Andy Ruiz shocked the world, and the two were scheduled for a rematch. The second fight was very different than the first. Joshua had a very cautious approach, keeping his distance and controlling the fight. Take your time. Joshua starts to up the ante. Ruiz is always dangerous. Chopping right hand already on Ruiz. Punches really well. He earned his redemption by winning the bout unanimously, closing the Andy Ruiz chapter in his book. Pride of London, England, and once again, the heavyweight champion of the world! On December 12, 2020, once again, the Nigerian reminded everyone that he is a finisher, knocking out the former title challenger, Kubrat Pulev, in the ninth round. Now for Joshua to finish. 
Third knockdown of the fight for Anthony Joshua. Right hand, and down goes Pulev, and that's it. In the next two bouts, he fought the undefeated Ukrainian Oleksandr Usyk. Usyk is a heavyweight that moves like a lightweight. He is a puzzle that is hard to solve, and Joshua could not find a way to beat him. Although Anthony has the power on his side, the speed and technique were on Usyk's side. Joshua fought well in both their bouts, but the Ukrainian was just a slightly better boxer. I don't know, you know, he got caught there. Put them in there, talking to him. Angel Fernandez and Robin Edging the Nigerian on the scorecards twice. Anthony Joshua is scheduled to fight Jermaine Franklin, who would be a stepping stone to Joshua's road to redemption. The Nigerian has his eyes on the belt and won't stop until he gets it. If the rumored fight between Tyson Fury and Usyk ever capitalizes, we might be seeing Joshua fighting the winner between the two. Considering Fury's size and superiority, we can assume that he would win against Usyk, and a possible clash between Fury and Joshua might be scheduled in the future. I don't think I can retire today, because I need that Joshua fight. We have been trying to make that fight for years. Will Joshua reclaim the heavyweight throne? Only time will tell. But if he does, he will enter boxing history as one of the greatest that ever did it.